Hello and welcome to Sorting Algorithms Read Depths. You're watching episode 7, Recursion. Recursion, not actually a sorting algorithm. This episode is actually a lead in to the next episode because in the next episode, I'm going to show you quicksort. And the way quicksort actually works is by recursion. So, what is recursion and why is it so useful? To understand this, we need to look a little deeper into writing code. In coding, you can write a function. A function basically just contains certain lines of code that you can call as a chunk and they will do their job. Recursion exploits this by actually having a function that runs itself. This may seem a little bit counterintuitive at first because, you know, if a function runs itself, won't things go really crazy from there? And yes, in fact, things could go quite crazy if you don't do it right. But when done properly, it can actually simplify a lot of problems. However, if you've been doing slightly advanced math, this concept is actually not new. Take for example Fibonacci numbers. Now let's take a look at how they actually define Fibonacci numbers. You see, the value of the nth Fibonacci number is actually the value of the n minus 1 Fibonacci number added to the value of the n minus 2 Fibonacci number. This means in order to find the 10th Fibonacci number, I must know the 9th and the 8th. In order to know the 9th, I must know the 8th and the 7th. In order to know the 7th, I must know the 6th and the 5th. And you see how this goes. And you must be wondering, well, won't I be doing this forever? And the answer is no. You see, any form of recursive definition must have a base case. This base case is where we can build this recursion on top of. That's why the definition of Fibonacci number does not just stop at this line, it also has this line. The first Fibonacci number is 1, and so is the second. That way we can actually derive that the third Fibonacci number is 1 plus 1, which is 2. The fourth Fibonacci number must then be 2 plus 1, which is 3. So you can actually get a pattern here. By knowing previous values, you can actually build up the newer values. And this in summary is basically how recursion works. Recursion is basically like the definition of a recurrence relation in a sense that it needs to specify a base case, a case in which, you know, recursion must stop happening, as well as a recursive case in which further copies of itself gets called. So in this episode, I'm not actually going to use the sorting algorithm as an example. So instead, I'm going to show you how the Fibonacci sequence can be implemented using recursion. I'm going to actually write this algorithm in pseudo code I try to not show coding stuff in my sorting algorithms videos, but I guess in this case, this sort of makes things clear. So I'll try to break this down as much as I can, so you don't have a lot of problems understanding this. So basically, this is the function that returns a Fibonacci number. In fact, it returns the nth Fibonacci number that the user specifies. Right off the bat, if the user enters 1 or 2, we return 1. This is of course in accordance to the base case of the recurrence relation. Now in a case where the user passes an input larger than 2, we're going to have to go through the recursive part. So once again we put in an if statement to see if the user has entered anything larger than 2, and if he has, we're going to have to use the sum of the two previous Fibonacci numbers. I think you can kind of get the picture here, I hope you can, I hope I'm not confusing you too badly. So what I'm actually going to do now, just to make things even clearer, is to trace a call for Fibonacci 5. So okay, I call Fibonacci 5. In order to get that value, I need to find out Fibonacci 4 plus Fibonacci 3. Fibonacci 4 itself is Fibonacci 3 plus Fibonacci 2. Fibonacci 3 is Fibonacci 2 plus Fibonacci 1. Now, just look at what's happening here. We are only looking for Fibonacci 5 and we've already spawned so many copies of the same function. This is why recursion can get messy. You need to, you know, kind of watch your back, make sure you're doing things right. And of course, any recursive algorithm has its limits. If we were to actually call Fibonacci 100, we're going to be here for some time. So anyway, let's keep on tracing this. Now, at any point where we call Fibonacci 2 or Fibonacci 1, we're saved because that's just going to return 1. It's not going to call any further copies of Fibonacci and that is when things start moving back. All the unanswered questions suddenly start getting their answers, and of course, the functions can terminate nicely, and the values are returned to their callers. 
Eventually, at the end of the day, we get our answer to Fibonacci 5. So hopefully with this entire Fibonacci example, I hope that I've given you a slightly clearer idea of how recursion works. From the next episode, we're going to actually make use of these concepts to do sorting. Well, that basically wraps it up for this episode. If you have any comments, queries or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you liked this video or found it helpful, I do appreciate every like, favorite and subscription you give me. Once again, that's all there is for this episode. Until next time, you're watching 0612TV.